And Char, everybody. Yeah. Oh my God! How much do you love Char? After watching that, <laughs> the line told me the end of the hug Char. <laughs> right, let's start with an easy one. How did you end up on a subject like this? You know, making a documentary. It's not like it's something you see every day and you go, "Oh yeah, that'd be interesting." Well, some of you might, some of you know. But I'm in this movie for a moment uh, when Donald is talking about how he did a haunted house in the sixth grade. That's how I met Donald. And that picture, when he's the army guy, I'm the Freddy Krueger kid. Oh. Oh. And we met scaring kids in that haunted house so bad that the high school kids that came to the fall carnival got so scared they broke through the uh, cardboard wall to get out. <laughs> they closed down the whole haunt. We're like, we did it. That was amazing. <laughs> and we've been best friends ever since. And I knew that Donald would make an amazing story because when you look at him, it's like, that's the Terminator. <laughs> but then you talk to him and you realize, oh, this is a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And when you know his story and how that haunt brought his family together and how a haunted house actually healed a family, that's when I was like looking at the spectrum of what's going on in the world of haunted houses. And when you see that they're getting more extreme, it's one that was, you know, Russ McKay McKay Manor, the most extreme thing I've ever heard of in my life, the most shocking thing of all time. I was like, you know what, it's interesting. If, if we put that in this movie, the juxtaposition is going to be so strong. And sometimes you need the dark to expose the light side. And when you look at someone like Char and Donald, you know, in just a haunted house documentary, if it was just them, you're still gonna get people going, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> well, then you bring in McKamey Manor a little bit. <laughs> and then the rest of you who don't normally go to haunts start seeing the traditional haunts the way I do. You know, they're full of love. And like Char right here, one of my favorite, my favorite monster of all time, that's the kind of monster I want in a haunt scaring me. Because <laughs> you know you're going to feel that love coming from that other person, too. And you get to scream and you get to laugh. That's the best part. Right, you guys have questions because I can dominate this forever. So, <laughs> who wants to ask a question? Start right there. Um, did, did you actually go through all of the extreme thoughts that were. No! <laughs> no! I, look, I filmed at McKamey Manor, and that was traumatizing enough. I'll be honest, there was a time when I actually dropped the camera um, and, and grabbed this, this woman, um, Christina, the one who flew from Kuwait, flew 19 hours. She's an American contract worker in Kuwait. She takes time off to come out here to go to haunted houses. She went to the game now. There's one moment where she just went into shock. And I and Russ is talking to her, and he's doing his voice, you know what's next? I'm like, hold on, Russ. <laughs> I think she's really gone into shock. And he's like, oh, really? I'm like, really? And I just picked her up and I walked oh. her in the house and um, sat her on the couch. And she just was gone for about 30 minutes and she snapped out of it. And she goes, why am I not in the haunt anymore? <laughs> I said, because you went into shock. She's like, I flew 19 hours for this. I want to go back in the haunt. <laughs> and then Russ comes out and he's the, the, the whole different hey, baby girl, how you doing? Screw you, put me back in that haunt. He's like, well, hold on now. She's like, fuck you, I want to get back in that haunt. He's like, watch your mouth. And like, all of a sudden, he's like, I want to get back in there. And I can't believe, and the next thing you know, he walks in the haunt, he comes back, throws her over his shoulder, runs in there, I'm like, oh my God. Four more hours later, it's over. And she says, oh, it was wonderful. I can't wait to come back. Came back three more times. Oh my I've God. stopped using the word weird. I stopped using the word, oh, this is for, no you know what? It was for her. It was definitely for. It was a guy we couldn't even put it in the movie because it would take the air out of everyone that went to McKinney Manor. One guy had a smile on his face the entire time. They drowned. They go, "How was that?" He goes, "It was horrible, sir. It was terrible. I hated it." And then they go, they put a tarantula on his face. He goes, "Oh, it's a brown recluse." <laughs> I love brown. I have two. And then they said, "What if we shave half your head and your beard?" He's like. It'll be weird at work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they did it, and then they said, "Is anything, anything frighten you at all?" He's like, 
my wife. <laughs> so they get his wife there. <laughs> no. Yes. Okay. I have this footage. <laughs> I really should release this too. He's he's uh at he's crawling on the ground, uh, as you do, and he's blindfolded. And all of a sudden, his wife is there. And she's like, "Give me this hose." She turns on the garden hose, and she goes, "Bark like a dog." And he went, "Oh no!" And then she sprays the hose up his nose. <laughs> kicks him, sprays it right in his face to a point where I've, I was like, oh my god, what's happening here? And she's screaming, bark like a dog, squeal like a pig. And then when it was over, Russ was like, would you two work at my haunt? <laughs> <laughs> and they did. <laughs> and I said, how did you two meet? They go, an online poetry chat group. <laughs> he was the only one that took the poetry seriously. Oh, that's real. <laughs> Whenever you ask nosy questions like, how did you meet? What do you do? Like, what do you do? Grace. I didn't know the answer. I didn't know she was going to say risk management. <laughs> that was so bad. Um, great thing about having a beard, no one can see when you're trying not to laugh. You just go. <laughs> Anything else? Any other question? Let's take another one. Right there. This question's for Char. Uh, I, I love what you do, and I, I think you're amazing. Um, let's see, what are some uh, what are what are some some actors or actresses um, that have inspired you in terms of their performances and scary things? And I was just wondering, the the people who attacked you that time, did anything happen to them? Is there any rules about this sort of thing? Which time did I get? Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, well, uh, I'll tell you, the people that inspired me were um, people like the old school actors, you know, Boris Karloff, um, Margaret Hamilton, I loved her, which, which I, she's great, um, Vincent Price. Uh, that's when I grew up. That's the kind of stuff I was watching. I love that stuff. Uh, Universal Monsters, the classic guys. Uh, the guys that, uh, well, uh, the worst heart that I got was, well, I had two bad ones. One was at uh, Knott's. It took me out of Knott's, out of real haunting. And I had three crust vertebrates when a guy jumped on my back. And they let him go. Mm. Okay, so he got away. Uh, I got hurt at the 17th door last year. We had a guy come through and uh, punched uh, one guy. He made him bleed. He was... Well, he was like off his medicine and he broke down the doors and I saw him going into the last room and he was he got through my room and I was like against the wall I saw the door explode he was going to go through the room and he was going to kill the kids in the next room and I was like come this way come this way and I sent him out the side door and he turned around and he like ran to the side door and right at the last minute bam of course he smacks me and I fly up against the wall on my back again that guy he went to jail yeah. yeah! But it's usually the other way around, uh, you know, don't hit the monsters, like this guy in the movie talk. Don't hit the monsters, mm -hmm. and people get warnings. But, um, like, I'm working now, I, I just mentioned the 17th door, I'm working there right now. Uh, we have, like, a really, really strict rule, uh, hands on anyone, you're out of there. So I'm really happy to work there. <coughs> Thank you. And she's also she's also a mentor to a lot of monsters. Yeah, I got a lot we of haunt kids. We were a lot of haunt kids. We were at... Um, the opening of Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights and we get there real early and there are all these kids running up and hugging her saying thank you so much I got in my first haunt because of you and it wasn't one or two or three it was like 30, 40, 50 wherever we went people were running around to hug her and it was just it's one of the most incredible things I love this woman when I we did the first interview I did with her I was like oh my god she's gonna be a star in this movie and when she mentioned the phrase haunt widow I was like What's a haunt widow? It's 40 years of experience in an industry. You know, this is, I just, I'm so lucky to have her in the movie. It's been really great. Let's take another one. Right um, For sure, um, and, and also for you, um, possibly. Um, as somebody who's, <laughs> who's a, well, no, I don't know. As somebody who's a fan, um, but who's, you know, getting older and like, you know, your joints. Like me? Well, mm. yeah, your joints kind of do stuff. Yeah. Like, I tend to be really wary. I, I really want to try the 17th door, but anything with a waiver, I just worry. You have a safe word, which is what separates, like, I also work blackout, too. Yeah. Um, and 17th door, you have a safe word. Uh, at blackout, you're done. At 17th door, you can skip the room. Oh, I'm in a room with snakes. I don't like snakes. Mercy. Okay, you walk in. You walk down the next. One. I guess I'm less. I'm not so worried about being too scared as I am about some kid who doesn't know what it's like. I to train be. all them. Yeah. I train, like in, I, I can't talk about other places, but I can talk right now what I'm working on, and I train all my haunters. And we have safety first as our number one 
uh, on number one thing because I want you to come through. I want to scare you. I want to terrify you. And then at the end, we'll laugh about it, me and you. <laughs> and I want all my haunters to feel the same way. And I want everybody coming through to have a good time because, you know, with the things that happen these days, you just feel like you want to scream, don't you, like all the time? <laughs> it gets worse and worse every day for us. This is a great month to just really let it out and go to a haunted house, go to any attraction, and just scream with us. Because when you are feeling, we're feeling in a triplicate. That, that adrenaline that you feel when you go through, all the haunters feel that. I had new haunters this year, just in the past week, come up and hug me and thank me for hiring them, and I never knew it would be like this. Yeah, it's like this. It's very addictive. It's a lot of fun. But it's dangerous, and uh, you do have to watch out for safety. Yeah, the I fact, guess. But I the got fact is, that most of the industry is like Char. Yeah. Most people who yeah. are doing this yeah. grew up loving this, and they want. Like, Russ is the outlier, okay? Yes. It's definitely the. You get it, though. Uh, there was a reviewer recently who was just like, he's making it look like every haunter is like Russ. I was like, uh, well, I'm pretty sure every haunter in this said, that's not even a haunted house. Well, how can you call it a haunted house? Like, every it's single person was shocked house. by it, you know? Although, you know, he did get on the haunt circuit at every haunt convention, all the Halloween conventions. He's one of the best customers of the big props, the some that are cost $20,000, $10,000. So people in the haunt world know who he is. Um, it's one of those things where majority of the haunt industry are people who grew up loving it. And they just want you to have the most incredible experience too. But there are a lot of these extreme haunts that are popping up. Some are incredible. You know, some are actually incredible. Read the reviews what people say. Because some if you they'll put something Read the reviews. They'll they'll yeah. put something in there and you'll know whether it's for you or not. But there's a lot of great experiences out there. And, and the fact is there are more haunts now than there have ever been before. They keep piling up. And like Rashar was saying, you know, I even when I was when I was starting to make this, I saw a kid at a restaurant rolling around on the ground screaming, and I was like, oh my god, I want to do that too. <laughs> I, sometimes I just want to scream my head off, and that's my favorite thing about a haunted house, is that I can. I can go to a haunted house, you can scream your head off, you can fall to the ground like I do a lot of the times, <laughs> and it's totally socially acceptable. This is the time where we get to be kids again. When Char says that line in the movie, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what it is to, to, to haunt. I hope this doesn't scare you away from going to haunted houses. That's not the point of it. Did the point did, does it, did this make you want to go to a haunted house? Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Because I don't want to scare you away from haunted houses. Shelly, I see you're really scared. But we, <laughs> just but, gotta um, pick the right one. You gotta pick the right one. You gotta pick the right one for you. The fact is this: there are so many subcategories of horror. You have horror comedy, and you have torture porn, <laughs> right? Mm. And that look now we have a haunt for every single sub genre of horror. You want an escape room? Maybe you like Saw. <laughs> you know, you want the more aggressive hands-on experience? You're probably a hostile fan. <laughs> you know, you want some horror comedy? Do the Ash vs. Evil Dead maze at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. You're going to love it. You know, there's, there's something for every single person. That's what, I, that's what I like about what's going on in the industry right now. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I was actually a scare actor. Yeah. <laughs> um, over at Horror Nights. And uh, what was your favorite like some scares are so memorable that they literally just hang on for you for years. Like, what is one of your most memorable scares? Well, I was just talking to John Murdy about uh, one that I saw in Lama, uh, two, three years ago. Uh, La Llorona? That's it. Uh, with the horses that were skeleton horses. That was freaking great. Yeah. I loved it. I go to haunt it. I go to like every time I can, every moment I have off. We just did uh, Creep LA. That was amazing. Uh, I went to Delusion. The first time I, went, I, I, I was acting in Delusion two years ago. But the first time I went to Delusion, we come around the car. I saw one of my friends who's an actor. He was in it. So I went, saw him. That was really cool. And then I'm like, okay, that was a cool scene. Let's go around the house. We go around the side of the house, and somebody's on the end of the house and going, hello, hello. And we look up, and she falls out the window. <laughs> oh, my. I, really? She really fell out the window. I'm not joking. And I turned to my husband, who it was the only thing I was able to drag him to. And I said, I'm done. I don't want to do anything but delusion. <laughs> it was just like, it just took me like by surprise. I had no idea that they were doing real stunts in the show. And then just going through it, uh, you have magic powers. And it, I really liked doing that. And I was really lucky. Um, I was able to work there, wait a second, three years ago. Right. Years just 
blend together. Today. Right. I'm lucky, Four years ago. Lucky that I actually filmed Delusion for years. And the, on the bonus features, oh, you actually get to see the rise, the fall, and the rise of Delusion. You get to see the people coming after Delusion try to shut him down from what this theatrical experience that he was doing. He let us film him directing, doing the stunt coordination. You get to see the stunt rehearsals. I, it, the most brutal thing was editing this movie because we, we chopped this thing down. I actually had, um, we had 30 minutes of bonus features. We, you meet, you go deeper into the story of, of John Murdy from Halloween Horror Nights. It's a, gr it's great. I just, just saw I just saw it this morning when I was putting on my makeup. I had to stop and watch it, and the Murdy part really got to me. You get he to talks see about his grandmother, his grandmother who got him into haunting. Awesome. You get to see pictures from the first haunted house he ever did, which was a Star Wars haunted house. <laughs> it's really cool. In the seventies, the year Star Wars came out, he made the costumes, he made the props, and they looked incredible. You also remember Haunted Overload, the giant skulls. You get to really get into their story. You get yeah, to meet that, that guy's wife that got the skull ring. Awesome. And <laughs> Jamie, years from now, just like, all right, wrap it up. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's really yeah, cool. I know it was hard for John to cut the movie down so people could actually see it. Uh, the bonus features, you really do have to see it. It's really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. The bonus features are actually they're really emotional. Yeah. There's a lot of real emotional moments. But yeah, that's what this morning all we were doing was getting the movie out to all the Kickstarter backers. Make sure the I'm a backer. backer. Yeah. <laughs> I met John at a show uh, I did called Play Dead. It was at the Geffen Theater, and my co my cat one of the, my co castmates is like, "Oh, you got to meet this guy. He's doing a documentary on haunted houses." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay, sure. I get that all the time, and I talk to people a lot." But he got that show. That was a special show. He got that show, and I, it's like just knowing, oh, this guy gets that show. And then when he interviewed with him, I was like, there was something about him. I knew he had the real thing, and I was so proud and so lucky that I was able to hook up with John. He's a pretty amazing guy. Oh, I love her. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the first show I saw of her, she scared the hell out of me. She scared me so bad, it was crazy. I scared you at an art exhibit. You did. <laughs> I was going through an art exhibit. Look, she, the makeup artist that did the makeup in, in the movie for her, there's actually, she scared her and kept scaring her until oh, yeah, she, she cried. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> she was uh, that was, that was she, too She good. did my makeup and it was just like, you know, I changed it to my monster and I just chased her. Around. She chased her, she, she chased crying. Larry Bones, she chased Larry Bones' wife, His Sharon wife Bones. Was really free. She's running around screaming, I'm trying to catch up with them. It was, it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> fun, I'm my scare actors, right? And then when, the, when you're done filming is when you always find out other stories. And I found out when we were done filming, and she's like, yeah, I was in one of the original shadow casts of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh. She was Riff Raff. Oh. Oh. Perfect, right? Like, oh my god, I'm done editing, the whole thing's finished, we could have put that in there too, it drove me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one last question. Make it a good one. Well, outside of the bonus features, were there other rust level crazy extreme haunts that you shot or wanted to shoot or heard about that you know could be like volume two? Oh, definitely. Um, you see glimpses of one of them that was actually... Which one? Well, you see glimpses of Heretic, and okay. that was, you know, that was a bit of a dangerous situation at that haunt. The um I've no I know they've they've come around, they're they're actually doing much a better, safer work now. And I hear a lot of people that love it and have gone several times. But when when I was there, the lead actor that night was drunk. And I even said this guy's drunk. Mm. There could be an accident here. And um I went around filming but then I didn't know this until later after I left. Um, there was an accident, and one of the actors, um, I think she got her leg broken because they missed a mark. Um, that's the thing that's so, that's interesting. I mean, one thing I'll give McKamey Manor, no one is, a, they're not drinking any alcohol, that's for sure. But the fact is this, when you choose an actor, you have to choose someone with compassion. Like, I have to say, the best storytellers of horror from George Romero, Wes Craven, Carpenter, these are people that are really empathetic. They care about people. They love people. They, the only way to really scare someone in like a, a meaningful way that's gonna stay with them, but also entertain them, is someone who's empathetic. You have to have the heart to have the horror. If you don't have the heart, it's just sadistic. You know, It's just not right. And I wanted to make sure that when you watch this, you get, wow, you have to have that heart to get an experience that afterwards people won't regret. People are gonna love it. They'll think about it forever. I remember the first haunts I went to. I remember 
the amount of times I went through them over and over again. I still remember this one haunt that was down the street from my house when I was eight years old. I remember it perfectly. I remember exactly how it started. I, it was there was a great moment where you're standing there and they turn off the lights and they lowered all these plastic spiders down on you. <laughs> it was a moment where you had to help defeat the monsters of the house and this was way before From Dust Till Dawn. There was a moment where like a disco ball comes down, it lights up and it starts killing the vampires and I was like, oh my God. Every time, there's, there's moments like that where you're just like, I wonder if that guy worked on the movie. But there's moments like that. Some of my most favorite moments are moments that I've had and an experience like this in an October. I mean, December, you're looking at the houses from the outside, Christmas lights. Look at our house, don't come inside, right? <laughs> you can carol, you can come to the doorway, you're not coming in. <laughs> Haunted houses, it's when your neighborhood opens up and they're not just inviting, they're, they're inviting you in for a show. They want to entertain you, they want to hear you laugh, they want to hear you scream, and they want you to have memories for the rest of your life. Rotten Apple, a uh, couple that was in the beginning of the film. This year is going to be the 27th year doing a haunted house. They, they almost got shut down this year by some neighbors who were like, we've had enough of it, but they won them back over and they're doing their haunt again. You know? But yeah, I filmed over 250 hours. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot of story. And um, I definitely want to do a series. Um, and, uh, what's thing about this movie is I wanted it to feel like a movie. I want the first cut, the first cut of this movie, if you didn't love haunts, you hated this movie. The first cut of this movie was the Dio of haunt movies. It was like, I got haunts! Like, you know, it should be called Hauntastic. It's just haunt on ice. It was just too many haunts. Every haunt you saw, you saw all of it. But the problem was, people who I knew, people who are here right now, they gave me really constructive criticism that I love. You know, I have to say, there were the people in the start that weren't into ha haunts that were like, I want to know more about this person. I want to learn more about that person. And I was like, okay, so what their problem is, is they're not connecting in an emotional way. It's true. The favorite documentaries are the ones where you explore a subculture and you really get to know people. And I was skimming a rock off a lake. I want to get deeper with it. And by taking out, I think we got, we got a lot more out of it. And by doing a series, I want to do a series so bad. I already have so much cut together. Plus, other haunts now, the ones who said no, are saying yes. There's a haunt in Detroit. Two brothers that live in a haunted house that's four stories tall, they live in the haunt. Oh my god, I want to film them so bad. <laughs> so bad. I know that's going to be awesome. I, I already know exactly the format of the show. I really want to do it. I think it'd be, I could already start the show off with what I already have that we, we didn't even share. And Paula's right there, who screamed her head off in the movie. It was so awesome. Oh, yeah. She's actually in the Soska Sisters. Um, you're in American Mary, right? I was, yes. She was in American Mary. I love yes. that movie. And what's so interesting is <laughs> you, she's, the Soska Sisters <laughs> said, you should put our friend Paula in there. I'm like, yeah, but she's an actress. You know, she's like, no, no, no. No, she's scared of everything. That's how <laughs> she said. That's right. She's scared of everything. And I, we had her go through a haunt. That was a home haunt. Sherwood Scare. Sherwood Scare. It's easy one. It's a, oh. Terrifying. Well, Jasmine Corso, she went through that easy one too, and she was the one who dropped to the ground. She's like, like when they drop, their, they just drop. She dropped. Oh my God, that guy's haunted house was so incredible. It had a great storyline to it, and I couldn't even get that in the special features. I had to be real brutal with the special features too. Um, but I really want to explore what what he did in that haunted house. It's so much fun to watch what he did in the driveway and in through the house. The storyline. It was a haunted house in a studio in like the 20s. And it started off with the guy going, roll a film. And a projector starts going, there's a black and white film. And they go, say your line, dear. She goes, I don't want to say my line. And all of a sudden her eyes roll back. She's crawling the walls. The movie theater screen drops down and she leaps out at you. <laughs> Everyone backs up and then the floor you're standing on drops. Oh. Oh. Someone's backyard, the floor drops. The floor <laughs> drops. And then the door opened and then the haunt started. Oh my, that guy, by the way, ended up winning the Doritos uh, Super Bowl commercial, one million dollars, went on set with Zack Snyder, he's been jet setting, getting ready to do a movie. These are storytellers, and it's incredible to see these storytellers get the chance to sometimes break free and tell stories. John Braver from Delusion has a VR experience now. It's fascinating that Russ McKinney sees himself as a director. 
They sit with you. And it's <laughs> but what's even more fascinating are the people that you meet that I met that have watched a lot of his videos. And man, of parties that I could go to, like, well, have you heard of McKimmy Manor? I'm like, well, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> and they start talking about the people I met. They go, oh, this one guy, tall. Oh, I feel bad for And Mandy. They'll never be the same again. And they start telling these stories. I'm like, oh my God, this is people are sitting and watching it. Someone told me, don't you feel, feel like you're in a way you're almost legitimizing Russ by putting him in a, in a movie? Like, you know, some of his YouTube videos have 10 million views. <laughs> Look, I hope 10 million people watch this movie. <laughs> 10 million people watch the movie, download the film. Millions of people watch those videos. Sometimes thousands and thousands or more are commenting and arguing and fighting. So yeah, he's been out there a lot longer than I have. But um, I really hope that we opened up the world a bit and we got to show people a deeper look into this Halloween subculture you've ever seen before. And I really hope you have a greater respect for the monsters, for the people behind the mask, for the home haunters, and that you see that this whole spectrum of haunts and how it reflects what goes on in our society and how I still can't believe when we're doing the haunt history section that 2001 was when Halloween made the most amount of money it ever made, then beat out by 2008, the financial meltdown, now being beat out by this year in pre-sales alone, and at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights opened September 15th, sold out completely, and it's going through November. And that's across the board. By the way, 40 haunted houses were open for Easter this year. 40 <laughs> Easter haunted houses. You had to get a bunch of Easter eggs, and bunnies with chainsaws chased you. Whoever had the most amount of eggs at the end won. By the way, this was in LA, Kentucky, Alabama. It was all over the place, and they all sold out. So it says a lot about society. <laughs> oh, and Christmas, the, the Krampus haunts, too, that are coming Christmas time. And we already know, I believe Delusion's coming back in the springtime. And I think they're going to be doing a year-round like kind of Delusion land, which is what I've been hearing. I'm so excited. This is, the, this is the time for interactive theater and for us all to come together and scream our heads off so we can get on with what's going on in the world today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hear from the Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you guys for an amazing Q&A. We are actually, I think now, 20 minutes late showing our next film. Oh, shit. <laughs> but...